All right, guys. So today on the Feeble Minded Podcast, I have YouTuber, skateboarder, and entrepreneur George Poulos. Hello. Thanks for coming <laughs> in, man. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm psyched you were able to make it out in such short notice. Yeah, I'm also <laughs> stoked. Um, just said this to you, but second time in Long Island. Yeah. First time was yesterday. Yeah, what were we doing out here? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yesterday. Should I look at you or the camera? Uh, hey, look at look, me, yeah. Look at you, yeah. yeah. So yesterday I went to Triple Eight New York City offices, which are in Port Washington. Just kind of say what's up, hang out. So that was cool. Okay. And drove right back here today. That's awesome. Under your house. <laughs> First two times back to back. Yeah. I like it. All right. So what are we doing over there? Um, Just kind of said what's up to the guy who runs their Instagram. Because we, we DM back and forth. Triple Eight. We're, we're kind of in a partnership. It's a little ambiguous. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, they. Uh, I saw you posted something on Instagram, right? They're yeah. Like... They give me free helmets, and I have a discount code with them, basically, that my nice. viewers could use. Hell yeah. Um, Hashtag yeah. helmet gang. Helmet gang, yeah. That's right. Yeah, they post that, too, sometimes. It's, it's pretty yeah. cool. I definitely want to talk to you about that yeah, later, I, I would for love sure. To talk yeah. About that, yeah. But, um, so, yeah, you got here. You're leaving tomorrow on a trip. Yeah. Right? 6 a.m. flight. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, damn. All yeah, right, it's so, going to uh, be rough. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I guess you're all packed and ready to go. Everything, I'm not right? packed at all. No. Nice. Yeah, and uh, the reason I want to be back <laughs> at 4.30 is because I'm street skating with Josh Katz. Really? Yeah, but I don't even care. It's like I get, I get travel anxiety before flights, mm. so I like to have a lot of stuff to do. Things before. going on. Yeah. 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 That's good. Honestly, I'm kind of the same way, and I'm very simple. Yeah. I don't have many things I bring. Yeah. So I'll just kind of be like, all right. <laughs> yeah, a couple hours yeah. before. But uh, where are you heading? Uh, going to Bend, Oregon. That's where Nora, my girlfriend, lives. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And um, what's it called? Well, how long are you going there for? Um, so I actually don't have a return flight, but I definitely want to be back in New York to watch like fall come because fall is my favorite season on the East Coast. Oh, yeah. So probably middle of September or something like that. That's awesome. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, Ben's nice. I passed through there on my yeah, trip, man. I, I was yeah. stoked. I wasn't expecting you to hit uh, Bend during your 50 stage challenge. But yeah. I was like, yeah, that's the park that I go to every time I visit them. What's it? Uh, was Ponderosa? Ponderosa Park. Yeah, yeah that park's fun, man. It's super fun. Yeah. yeah, it was a nice vibe over there. It's definitely different on the north. What's it? Northwest. Yeah, some. Tip, right? Well, Ben's like, Ben's kind of centered. Oh, no, I mean, just in like. Oh, of the country. Of the, yeah, of the country. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's way different. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I like, I like the vibe out there. It was cool traveling all over and seeing just how different geographical places kind of have people behave differently and stuff yeah. like that. I you mean, know? you, you kind of snaked around, I feel, which is really <laughs> cool. We went, we, yeah, I just drove across the country right after finishing school in June. And we, we just went straight over to the west. Okay. And that like seeing that gradient is really cool too. <sighs> yeah. Just like everything changes slowly. So, you took the northern route, like was no. it eighty or? Oh, no. It was like no, we took a southern route. Um, not too southern though. Okay. Our first stop was Nashville. Nice. We did that in one swing. It was like fourteen hours. That was yeah. like the worst part. <laughs> um, and then I think it was Kansas City, so it's not not too far south. Um, and then I think next was Rocky Mountains. Oh, yeah. I drove through there. It was yeah. pretty beautiful. It was yeah. sick. And yeah, we just <laughs> hit as many national parks as we could. A few in Utah. Uh, Josh, I know you went to Joshua Tree. I, I did. love Joshua Tree. Yeah, it's unbelievable yeah. there, man. It's crazy. It's absolutely. It's like a different world. You I'm know? jealous, though, because you, you camped there, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was like a last minute decision because we heard that you could see the Milky Way really good. Yeah. And yeah, you those, see, those pictures you posted were you know, unbelievable. Yeah, it was like probably yeah. the most unforgettable moment of the trip. Yeah. Yeah. Milky Way. Yeah, it's weird going there. Like, I didn't know what to expect. And I was just, you know, you hear about Joshua Tree, whatever. Yeah. I didn't really see pictures. And I just kind of like, yeah, we'll go. Yeah, and yeah. even when I agreed to go, I didn't know what it looked like. I didn't right. know anything. I kind of just like, all right, we're going to Joshua Tree. <laughs> and I got there and I was like. It felt like I was in like a Dr. Seuss book or something. It was so like <laughs> no, yeah, it has a sure. weird vibe to it. It's just it's so different. It's like super those, weird. Yeah. I loved it though, man. Yeah. I started rock climbing like kind of recently, just like on the side. That's gnarly. So 
being there, just like jumping around and that stuff. Yeah, like, on the boulders. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we had a nice big boulder at our campsite that was fun to climb on. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> was there uh, like a reason for this trip? Like, um, I think I have to shout out. It was like I've always wanted to do it. You know. Yeah. But near graduation season, Nora was just like, "Hey, let's do this," uh, and she kind of planned at least the whole first half. So I was mm. like. We're graduating college. Why not? You know? Yeah. So what better time? Yeah. That's funny. You know, my girlfriend was like, she was the one that did most of the planning. Yeah. So yeah. You're like on the way home, I was just like, yeah, we'll hit this. Maybe yeah, we'll yeah. do that. Whatever. And she's like, no, we got to like have some styles yeah, and like right. plan yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I picked the first hotel in Nashville and it was the worst place we stopped. Really? It was like a super eight, but it was like just not fun. You know, <laughs> yeah. And everything else she picked was like national park camping, super good vibe. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Yeah, damn. So, well, uh, what did you feel like you learned from that trip? Like being out there and just, you know, was that two or three weeks on the road? Something yeah, it was like, like it was like a full month because month? we like we went up to Bend and stopped there for a while. Um, it's different. Like I think one of the things I learned is just like my perspective of the country is different you know like when you fly to bend it feels like you're just popping from one place to another right but when you f when you f see and feel that that one big stretch of pavement brings you all the way there mm. kind of feel kind of feel more connected to the whole united states which is pretty cool yeah yeah it's like it's it's pretty unbelievable driving through the country yeah it's one I of mean, the greatest experiences I mean, you're like I'm. Pro I'm. I feel like I'm one of your biggest fans. Like, really? Your your fifty states challenge was just. I thought that was just so cool. Thanks, man. I yeah. mean, that's the reason I did it. I was just like, right. I feel like it's something everyone wants to do. Is just yeah. go like skate everywhere and see yeah. the whole country. And so I feel yeah. like that was like another reason I wanted to do it. I just saw you do it. Like, okay, if you could do that, I could go straight across the west. Like, that's all. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, man. Um, how was it traveling with your girlfriend? Cause I only, well, I guess I did do that on the way home, but yeah. my whole trip for 50 days was alone. Right. So I got like a little bit of both, but was it, um, yeah. Did you come out of that with like learning about each other more or oh, something yeah. like that? Or? I think so. I mean, well, so one funny thing is that I drove the whole, the whole thing. Really? Yeah. Real quick on the way home. After my whole challenge, I drove all the way home also <laughs> and didn't, she didn't drive one time. That's too funny. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm just like, I'm just like a natural driver. Like it's fine. I love it. I actually yeah. love it. Like driving. Yeah. I like it yeah. too. And she's not. So I just, I just did it, but it's nice. Um, having someone to talk to, you know? Oh yeah. yeah. I know you were, you were talking about how you really enjoy like solitary moments, like yeah thinking about yourself stuff like that yeah i mean not like every second right. but i mean for that it kind of was but yeah. i feel like like in particular a project like that where i'm 50 days straight like good things can come out of that i feel just being alone yeah and just like faced with your own thoughts or for sure you know, yourself sometimes i think so like when i travel i feel like i need a mission almost or something i'm kind of doing because huh. then if i don't like, I don't know, I feel like I'm running away from myself going on mm. a vacation. Right, right. You know, so it that almost needs sense. to be yeah. something that I'm interested in while I'm doing it. Yeah, that makes sense. And mm. yeah, it was it was also my first time camping. Um, and that was super exciting for me. Yeah? yeah? Oh, first time really? Yeah, ever. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice being out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was just it just popped in my head is so I just came back from Woodward and I drove over there with my friend Mike. It's like a four-hour drive. Okay. One thing that the cross-country trip does is turns a four-hour drive into like around the piece corner. Of cake. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah. So it's like driving over with Mike is cool because we get to just talk about random shit. But then I drove back on my own, and that was cool too because you can just kind of just see the road pass you by and just think about stuff, which is also cool. Yeah. Yeah, I've really come to enjoy my time on the road. Yeah. It's nice, man. Yeah, you should write a book or something. I don't know. Maybe. It's actually, <laughs> I've thought about it. It's pretty tough to, like, think about writing a book. That's like, I wouldn't even know where to start. It's probably a huge, like, project to focus on. Yeah. But I, maybe down the road. Yeah. Yeah, man. So what's, um, 
Do you have you ever left the country? Um, I have left the country when I was younger um, with my family, but it was like almost at a point where I was too young to appreciate it. Mm. So I almost don't count it. Okay. Um, but yeah, we went to like places in Europe. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I had an experience. I mean, I moved when I was younger to Montana. Like my parents pulled me out of school. That's cool. And yeah, we moved there and I just couldn't appreciate it because I was just right. wanting to skate with my friends. And yeah, shit like yeah, that. yeah. So, Same thing. Yeah. yeah. So I moved like, blocked it out pretty much and moved, you know, right back home six months. So I couldn't really experience like the beauty of Montana. Right. Like that place is unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, we love, we absolutely love Montana driving yeah. through. Stunning. It's unbelievable. Yeah. You went, did you go to Yellowstone? Or? We did. Yeah. On the way back. You got to tell me about that place, man. Yeah, Yellowstone. <laughs> so Yellowstone was absolutely freaking amazing, um, mostly because of all the animals. Mm. Like, first thing, we see, like, a bison chilling um, really? on the road. Yeah. And then, like, so I was flipping out. Like, there's a bison right there. Yeah. And then down the road, there's, like, a 100 bison crossing the road. It was crazy. I mean, they're pretty big, aren't they're they, huge, right? huge, yeah. <laughs> there's, like, a recent viral video of, like, a bison, like, tossing a kid up it's kind of wild <laughs> yikes yeah. yeah don't get <laughs> yeah, i'm close. sure they're massive and yeah. powerful um and a bison walked right through our campsite okay it's all in the vlog <laughs> are it's they great. like are they um like aggressive like will they they potentially go after you if you're not really doing anything or i think you're pretty safe like i mean the the national parks have like a 15 yards rule or something Okay. And you should be fine if you're far enough away. 15 yards. Was that 45 feet? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Damn. That's pretty hairy. So I walked right through the Yeah, the camp. came right through. Like we were just, I was walked, grilling. Yeah, I guess. What, what do they do? Crawl? Just I don't know. chomping super <laughs> slow. Like. Yeah. But yeah, I was Chugal. grilling up a hot dog and I was like, I was like, oh crap. Oh, hey. Like it's going <laughs> to want my hot dog. It didn't oh. really want the hot dog. It just walked right through. Yeah. Luckily, yeah. Super interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. All right. So, damn. So you. So the whole time you were making YouTube videos, right? Yes. Yes. I vlogged the trip. Um, not the whole thing, you know. Yeah. I'm like a selective vlogger, so I would pull the camera out once in a while. Yeah. yeah. Well, on my way home with my girlfriend, I didn't. Like vlog at all, just because I did fifty days in a row. Yeah, that's like before that. Gnarly. But <laughs> yeah, I feel like with um, what's it like YouTube and well, I'll speak for me, like my girlfriend. Yeah. Sometimes it can get like, it could, life could be all completely about YouTube. Yeah, it could. I don't know if that happens with you, like where it's like, hey, put it down, hang out with me, or like you know, get yeah. it off your mind type of a thing. Yeah, I mean, for me, I think um, it's like. Sometimes I feel this pressure like I always have to be vlogging. Yeah. But I I quickly dismiss that and just I try to actually only vlog when I feel like it. That's um, good. It's a good muscle to break in. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. You could easily fall down that that path like right. feeling. Yeah. And like every time I meet a YouTuber, I'm like curious if they're gonna be vlogging like every interaction I have with them. Mm. And I feel like I wanna avoid being that type of YouTuber. Yeah. Just because I feel like the camera, I feel like it does change the way I act. Yeah. Um, so I just want to make sure I'm keeping it real enough throughout life. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, the camera definitely changes the yeah. way people act. Uh, on my challenge or just in my videos in general, like I've actually always been fascinated by that. Like yeah. The camera comes out and it's like sometimes two completely different people. Yeah. And even with myself, like you're, tones change and right. things like that and i would be fascinated like uh just filming people without them knowing is my favorite thing in the world yeah it, like maybe that, you know, yeah. i'll ask them afterwards but like getting these raw real moments yeah to me is like the the most satisfying thing in the yeah, world yeah i really like that about those. your videos and i really remember um our conversation in connecticut because we talked about that and I think at that time I actually hadn't fully formed this opinion where I like want to be me first and YouTuber second in a way. Yeah. Um, cause I remember off the bat, I was telling you like, you should like make videos that do well in the algorithm, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And you were the one who was like more like, Oh, I want to make what I want, you know? Yeah. 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 You got to That's, 
Because that's all you have at the end of the day is you, how you feel, you right. know, what you're into. So, yeah. But yeah, I actually, I started, I did a couple list videos. Yeah. Recently. I, I saw them. I mean, I love teaching anyway. Right. But yeah. See, you can, <laughs> there, there is a type of video that you want to do and it does well in the algorithm. Right. That's the key. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's basically the, the, what's it? The golden zone. Like for yeah. me, it's like finding something right, like you're sure. truly psyched on and I guess, yeah. It's just yeah. something everyone could kind of digest. And right. It's, yeah. Right. But yeah, even lately, I've been, a lot of my videos just are not, they're not planned to do well in the algorithm. Yeah. Like I did one about getting organized and felt good to make, you know? So I just made it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way to do it. Right. <laughs> yeah. With, um, so with YouTube and my girlfriend, like all, even if I'm only posting videos like that I love to do, I'm still like completely kind of absorbed in it and yeah. I tend to get all in on things. Right. So it's like I'm always working on something or having some idea. Yeah. And so sometimes it's tough for me to forget that. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, so for me, so Nora really likes watching YouTubers and she's actually, she has really good insights when it comes to, just the YouTube game in general. That's awesome. And so we can actually yeah. just kind of talk about that. And I'll often bounce, just bounce ideas off her. And she, she almost has like YouTuber instincts. Yeah. So she'll like know what title is going to look good. What type of video does good. Like, so it's cool that we can just, we can just get to talk about it and yeah. it feels just normal. That's awesome. Know? Yeah. Yeah, my girlfriend too will pinball ideas and stuff yeah, yeah, like yeah. that, and it's definitely definitely helps for sure. For sure, <laughs> <laughs> it's weird because sometimes you're just sitting there, like I don't know. It's weird to just kind of concrete something by yourself. Yeah, sometimes it really helps to it be does. able to bounce any idea off of someone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Damn. So, how did you get into YouTube? Um. So, all right. So I made my channel in 2007, okay. where and I was like a little kid. If we do the math, that was 12 years ago. Okay. So I was 10. 10 years old, really? Yeah. Damn. And so what I started doing was film myself skating in my basement. It's pretty embarrassing. Okay. Um, But yeah, I would just make videos. Eventually, it turned into like some montages with my friends, you know, stuff like that. But it was... And at that time, there was no such thing really as being a YouTuber. So oh, it was yeah. just like for fun. You yeah. Know? Um. And eventually, like, fast forward to uh, college, freshman year. Um, that's when I really started noticing, like, skate YouTubers doing it as a job, you know? Okay. Um, Josh Katz, John Hill, Andy Schrock. Yeah. All those. That whole community, like, I saw them on YouTube and saw that they were doing this thing regularly. And for some reason, I just made a decision, like... To start posting videos every three days. That's so, awesome. Yeah. It's um, crazy to have that kind of uh, awareness. Like maybe you weren't like fully aware of what you were doing, but to be like, oh, these guys are doing it. I can do it. And I'm going to commit to it and yeah. kind of do something every week at, what were you, like 18? Yeah, 18. Sometimes like that. that's pretty tough to, for, like I'm barely doing that now and I'm right. 32, you know what I mean? So that's a, yeah, that's an awesome thing. Yeah. Like, to hop into at that age. Yeah, and I almost feel lucky. Like, what if what if that just didn't pop into my head, you know? Yeah. Um, and it was, so it was also a time in my life where, you know, I was in college, uh, majoring in computer science. Didn't Was never really, like, extremely passionate about computer science. Yeah. Always been very passionate about skateboarding. And I almost, in that at that time, assumed that you have to just go to college and get a normal job. So I was like, okay, if I do these videos every three days, at least I always have to skate in order to make the videos. Yeah. So it's almost like a way to make sure I never stop skating. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. And did your parents ever like have a, you know, like a something against maybe skateboarding or making sure like George got to go to college, you know, or <laughs> well, something yeah. like that, you know? I mean, so they basically growing up, I didn't even know it was like. I didn't even know it was an option to not go to college. It was like you go to high school, then you go to college. Okay. So they really had set that up for me. Um, 
So my vision up until up until I was in college is that there's this path everybody takes it, go to school, college, job. Right. Yeah. Um they were they always were supportive of my skateboarding. Me and my dad built a, a box back in the day. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um but they did always kind of want me to like join a real sports team as well or like play an instrument, mm. like do do more traditional things yeah my parents were on the same boat like and i'm a little older so skateboarding was even more right. further out yeah. of like something that was normal yeah. so like basketball and baseball were right. like the things to do and yeah i guess a lot of parents looked at it as just yeah it's awesome cool it's a hobby right and it'll pass and yeah. then you'll mature right and like you know yeah whatever but yeah that's i love that you were able to just go for it and like escape that i guess pattern of thinking like sometimes right. we just don't know any different and what we're exposed to is just what we know right and yeah sometimes like a couple of moments could just snap us out of it yeah, so it's sick that like you're doing it man it's amazing right. it, it yeah. is it's sometimes it's still like what the hell like yeah how did i end up <laughs> here you know it's awesome yeah, I'm so stoked. So you have well, you started the company, right? Yeah. All right. Arrow so Skate Arrow. Yeah. That's what's up. So yeah. how's that been doing? Like, what have you been doing with that? It's cool. So, it's just a clothing brand. People always ask me if I do skateboards because it's in the name Arrow Skate Co. Okay. But just make clothing. Um, I think I was really inspired by Brett. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, because I met Brett early on in my YouTube career. Yeah. And he was doing Fortune. So I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, that's awesome. Maybe yeah, Brett, I'll start something. My cousin Brett, he's, he, I think he inspired a lot of people in oh, our yeah. area and stuff, yeah. you know, for sure. Definitely. He was like one of the early, I don't know, YouTubers, skateboarders, yeah. or at least in the area or something. Right. I mean, he like had a name for himself before his YouTube channel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's like, been in a bunch of skate videos. And yeah. yeah. I almost feel like everyone like is a YouTuber or at least just, in my conscious awareness, like it's a lot of YouTubers and then they make a brand, but Brett made a brand and then he became a YouTuber. That's true. I didn't even think about that. It's kind yeah. of interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, man. Skate with Brett my whole life. He's yeah. like, it's incredible. He's the same, same way, I guess. He had such a vision at such a young age too, right. like with fortune. I don't know. I guess I'm so fascinated because I was never like that. I was almost looking like, completely opposite like looking for nothing to do to travel and experience things and not yeah. think about setting up my future i guess right. i guess there's a lack of thinking about the future yeah that's really what it was but in a way that's cool too you know focusing on the moment i feel like that's a valuable yeah. valuable thing to do as well i'll never regret it yeah, yeah. just because i've learned so much yeah. over the years from doing that but yeah it's just it's interesting how Small little behavioral things could just send you on different paths. No, it's true. So fascinated by that. It's crazy. <laughs> All right. So let's see what we got. So your next trip, you're, what's it? You're going back to Bend, right? Yeah. So just Nora's family lives out there. We graduated. We went to school together. Okay. We graduated. Now we're both at home. So just going to visit. Yeah. So you got, but you have no return ticket. Though. Not right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but we'll, I'm gonna get back. I have. I basically have to get back here, just like, okay, just have to. Yeah, the yeah. fall. Yeah, You're loving it. Yeah. All right, and then what do you got from then on? Like, what what do you think you're gonna be into? Yeah. So I mean, it's like graduated in May, and I'm I'm doing YouTube, doing Aeroskate Co. So basically, what I've started to do this summer, but it kind of keeps getting interrupted by like traveling. Um, and Woodward, but it's like I'm trying to actually work full time. Yeah. So like set hours, make sure I'm just working, trying to make it happen, basically. Yeah, it's that's also I've been trying to think about it. Yeah. Just because that's what it really takes, you right. know. Yeah. But yeah, that's um, it's pretty impressive, honestly, to be able to. I don't know. Do you? You must have like a few different things going on at one time to be able to make that your living right because yeah you can't really pull like money from let's say like the company you're running so even if that's doing well it's not like you are making like 
yeah. money, you know? Right. I mean, okay. So at this point, I'm living with my parents, so I'm not worrying about rent right now. Okay. Um, basically, what what my thinking is is I'm just gonna I'm gonna try my my full out best for a full year. So in May 2020, when it's been a full year since graduation, I'm just gonna like take a step back, just look at everything, see see if this is working, see if I can try it for another year, um, do something else, just keep going, you know? What other things are you into? I'm into a lot of things. Yeah? Yeah. Like, so I feel like my life is is not set in stone right now. Like, okay. I would totally be an, a teacher. Okay. Yeah. Or for something what, like what? that. For like a science? Or, Probably or English. English. I really like reading. Really? My favorite part about college was reading and, and talking to people about books. All right, you want to hear something interesting? Yeah. I have never read a book. Like, I've never finished a book, and I've tried. I always wanted to read and, yeah. like, learn, you know? And I just, I can't for some reason. I don't know if yeah. it's, like, the way my brain works. Well, it, but... it, I have trouble with it, too. And being in college when you, you have these, like, arbitrary deadlines kind of forces you. Mm. And I always appreciated when I actually finished. Okay. So, yeah, it's interesting. So being forced to do it, it's kind of like it, like... The version of like why I do challenges, right. you know, you set like something in stone that yeah. makes you do something, yeah, and then like you're saying, I guess you got used to it or saw the benefit of it from right. that, and right. then carried it on. Yeah, that's crazy, George, the English teacher. Yeah, I, I can and, see it. <laughs> and if I did that, I would absolutely keep posting on YouTube. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's awesome. Like maybe a little bit less, but yeah, I feel like that's setting a great example for kids you know what i mean you're having a job you're teaching and helping them and still doing yeah. your passion that's like something to look up to right i mean it's just like st it's very hypothetical yeah but yeah <laughs> probably if youtube is doing really well probably wouldn't do that mm -hmm. at least not right away you know yeah that's one thing i've always admired about your channel and just you is like you seem to have like a strong kind of moral compass and you're not really maybe doing things for attention or just kind of putting out negative energy. Yeah. You know? I mean, it, so my first viral video is called Why Skaters Hate Scooters. Okay. And it's like, it's a, it's always a weird feeling for me because sometimes people come up to me and like ask me why I hate scooters. <laughs> and if you anyone who knows me knows that I don't actually hate scooters. Just at that time, found the perfect thumbnail of a scooter kid. Yeah. And it was the perfect title. And yeah, and at the time when you posted it, I bet you weren't like, hmm, what could I get the most clicks on? Right. You're just like... Yeah, I was just like... It's like, yeah, it's a funny title. Yeah. That's exactly. funny. And so, like, once in a while, I'll be like, oh, should I delete that? But it does really help my channel. So it's like, you know... Yeah. Yeah, and it's just a funny piece of the journey. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, For me, YouTube... Like, I've always had that kind of moral compass it was always like kind of in me yeah or something like that or, i mean i definitely did my fair share of like bad things when i was a kid but sure. <laughs> it was there i felt and i feel like youtube helps it come through in people or at least in me yeah you know and then putting videos out looking at yourself on video it constantly examining yourself and then having the feedback of other people yeah thinking about it being seen by other people and it makes you think about yourself in a different way yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Yeah? Yeah. Is there any ways it, like, kind of showed you something about yourself or anything like that? Well, I I almost feel like I use YouTube as, like, a like a memory tracker. Like, okay. I want to be able to look back, see what I was thinking, doing, feeling, you know? Yeah. So it's almost like when I'm making a video... It's like I have that in mind, you know, and I'm like, all right, I'm 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 really going to live my life for this video and make it something that I'm proud to look back on. I don't know, I don't know how exactly I answered that question. Yeah. But, yeah. I've heard you use the, use the term time capsule before, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's another way to learn, you know, it's like looking at your past behavior or like even just the experience of creating that thing. Yeah. It's almost like you give birth or something and it's like you can now move on from that experience Absolutely. or that um, piece of time or yeah. something like that, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's funny, man. What uh, what do you think is the future of your channel? Like, what would you like to head towards or, you know? Fascinating question. I don't know. I feel like I almost don't even think about the future of my channel often. I think I'm moving away from pure skate content. I think I've already done that. Um, in a way, now it's more just about, like, what I'm going through and care about. I'd say that's like 50% and then 50% is skateboarding. I think okay. right now I really like that balance. It feels really good. Yeah? Yeah. Have you ever had like a fear of leaving skateboarding or like what the people that watch your channel that are into skateboarding, you know, would they think or like would they be let down or I don't yeah. know, just things like that? I mean, that's a, of course I worried about that. Um I feel I mean, like a lot of YouTubers, sorry to yeah. interrupt, have that kind of problem where they might have other interests or things and they kind of feel yeah. locked in. No, there's like a there's an interesting story with uh, Josh Katz who completely pivoted from skateboarding to photography. Okay. Um, I don't know like all about that, but I know he dealt with like having that audience who really wanted to see him skate and having to depart from that. Mm. It's probably a little weird. Um, I think for me. I am keeping the like skateboarding is still in every video. It's just not always the main focus. Um and so I am I am very aware of like trying to I guess keep everybody happy but also make myself happy, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Cuz that's yeah, once you pass a certain line, I feel that's when like you hear about like YouTube anxiety and things yeah. of that nature. I think that's where it really stems from is not like we were talking about in our conversation in Connecticut, it's like following what you yeah truly are into. Yeah, I mean, which I, is tough because a lot of the times that could not be marketable or not right, be course. something people yeah. are into. So it's yeah. weird to walk that line. Yeah, it's interesting. Man. I mean, I was in a flow of doing the five tricks videos back yeah. to back to back to back, and that started freaking me out because I was like, I was like, this isn't even exciting you know <laughs> yeah and they're all getting a lot of views like you're so winning <laughs> right and you're just like, all right so it's super weird to be like the numbers are doing great but you're not feeling excited about them mm. yeah yeah it's interesting stuff all right so yeah so you mentioned you're thinking about starting a podcast oh yeah 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 absolutely i would love to see that i feel like you you'd hold a good podcast yeah, yeah. i i it I just need to like buy mics and start. That's yeah. how I did YouTube too. Just gotta start. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing, but that's I'm a. I think I was an overthinker, or still am, really. In only certain aspects, though, it's so weird. Like most of the time, people tell me like, "How are you so carefree?" or this <laughs> and that. Like even with my challenge, that yeah. felt like second nature. But like certain little things will feel like the hugest obstacles, and I'll overthink them, like a thumbnail or something. I just. I don't know. I'll have like a block yeah. in my head about something. and I don't know. You ever feel things like that with, with YouTube? I guess so. But I don't know. I like, I just read this article about how done is better than perfect. And I think, I think my biggest block is every time I edit a video. So right now I'd say my average editing time is like 10 hours. Okay. Way too long. And it's because I'm looking through it a hundred times. Just like trying to make it perfect, so that's some some I'm really trying to snap out of. Just like, do yeah. It. Actually, I remember that stuck in my head because you asked me how long I edit for. Yeah, because I was like, <laughs> how the hell are you doing fifty days in a row? <laughs> yeah, and I was like, honestly, I almost do the opposite. It's like, it's almost not as fast as I can because you asked me that, and right. when you say as fast as you can, it makes it seem like. You don't care about the content. Right. You know what I mean? And yeah. I definitely do. And in my head, I'm like, I sculpt it. But I guess I just, my baseline is like, I care less about maybe like the graphics or maybe right. my vision of sculpting it is different. Yeah. You know, like I like things really raw. Yeah. So that's probably. And that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, those, <laughs> those videos are extremely raw. So that's really why I'm able to do it. But, yeah, and that's something that's cool about them hmm. is that they are raw. Um, have you ever 
was your like scooter versus skate? Well, wait, hate why sc- skaters hate scooters? Yeah, <laughs> was that like a raw kind of video because you were younger yes. at the time? Yeah? yeah. So I was just filming. I think I had an iPhone fisheye on, and I was just standing at the park filming my friends skating the stairs. Okay. And there was just scooter kids being crazy. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. Just one of those funny moments. You're at the skate park, and it's wild, and you just captured it. Yeah. That's so funny, man. So that probably took 30 minutes to edit. Really? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, isn't that funny, man? It is like, I don't know. All right, so let me see. Who are your influences on YouTube? Like, who inspires you? You know, what gets your, your head moving? Yeah. Get you psyched. It's kind of interesting. Like, so back in the day, it was, it was all the skate YouTubers. Yeah. Because they were skating all the time and making videos. I thought that was cool. Now, you're a big inspiration for me now. Just think you have good ideas, real content. Thank uh, you, man. Appreciate and that. I, and I, I appreciate your mini ramp <laughs> help because I'm trying to get more into transition. So Hey, transition... It's like, it's like, I feel like it's a savior for people my age. Like, and they just realize, wait, I could have fun, not kill myself. Yeah. And like a lot of people didn't skate it when they started skating. So it's just like this whole new world of so many tricks and things you yeah. can learn. Any, any listeners out there who are like sticking to street skating, just try it out a little. It's yeah. really fun. It really is. Yeah. And tricks tend to come for me almost easier there, like to learn them. You know, yeah. well, once you get that maybe initial balance down, right. it starts to open up a sense. lot. What were we talking about? We were talking about who inspired oh, you. Yeah. yeah. Right. So skate YouTuber is you. Um, these days, it's so basically all I'm watching on YouTube right now. I don't watch much YouTube, but I watch ASMR every night. What's that? It's uh, it's the, <laughs> do you actually not know what it is? I have no idea what that is. Oh, so it's like these, <laughs> it's like a, it's like. It's really weird if you don't know what it is. Okay. But it's like people are up really close to the camera making sounds. Okay. And it's you put your headphones in and it's like gives you this relaxing sort of really tingly effect. Like sometimes I'll get goosebumps. Um, it's so interesting. Yeah. And what kind of sounds are we talking about here? It could be whispering. Could be like touching the mic like. Oh, is it like that? Yeah, when like someone says something and you kind of like yeah, go like that, exactly, and it's like triggering that. Yeah, really. Yeah, and so it's like, I don't even know why I'm bringing it up right now, but <laughs> I feel like they're all really good at YouTube. Like they make long videos. They're all they all act really natural on camera. Um, Wait, so you're looking at them or you're just listening or sometimes both or it could or... be uh, so one so it's so funny that we're talking I'm about so this. fascinated by this. But yeah, so one yeah. of my favorite so it's mostly sounds, but one of my favorite uh parts about it is the visual triggers. Okay. Where they're like put their <laughs> hand up in front of the lens and like do hand movements. Really? Yeah, and it like I can't some, even picture that. It's like think about if you're if you're watching it full screen on your phone. Okay. Like at night, trying to chill out before bed. All right, just really, almost feels like they're right there. Feels really relaxing. Just soft sounds in your ear. Oh, it's almost like serves a practical purpose for me. Interesting. Oh, so maybe it's it's like comparable to a sound machine or something. Like at night, where you're like kind of just trying to decompress. I or, guess so, or... but I I think it's important that it's a person there. Hmm. Because it's like, it almost feels like a pseudo connection. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have, I can't believe I've never heard of this. Yeah. It, I feel like I've seen those letters around. Yeah. ASMR. It's not for, like, some people look at it and they're like, this is dumb. But I'd be interested to see what you think about it. Uh-oh, I might um, have to try it tonight. And they, yeah, so they have good thumbnails. Just, they're good at YouTube. And that kind of inspires me. It's always giving me ideas for some reason. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I got to get into this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and also, so Nora watches like, uh, Nora watches like fashion YouTubers, makeup YouTubers. Okay. They're also really good at YouTube. Um, so there's like, I feel like I know nothing about the female side of YouTube. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, and I'm I didn't sure either. it gets. Yeah. Um, but like, I've subscribed to some of her favorite YouTubers. Okay. And, like for a, 
I feel like I just I'm talking very generally today, but for a concrete example, like uh, this one YouTuber she watches made like a 10 back to school outfits video. OK, I was thinking like 10 outfits for skateboarding. It's like a direct, oh, yeah, yeah. direct line of inspiration wow. that led to an idea. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Sometimes it actually helps just not. For me, I don't watch any skateboarding anymore. Like, oh, yeah. of course I'm involved in skateboarding and right. I follow you and other people. So I'm going to see it no matter what, but yeah. I don't watch it on YouTube or like anything because one, I don't want to like absorb someone else's. I don't know, thing or interest or something, you know, like their mannerisms, I guess. And then, yeah, I feel like it just keeps me in my own kind of creative zone, like digging into my own Mm -hmm. personal creativity instead of pulling from somewhere else. But that being said, looking at other niches and things can really trigger ideas that I compare, you know, use into skating. Yeah, no, seriously, like just breaking out of the skating and watching complete like videos I would never watch feels weirdly good. <laughs> and it's like, I don't care about 10 back to school outfits, but for some reason, I don't know. Yeah. You, t- you care about 10 yeah. back to school skate outfits. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, what, what you said about mannerisms is funny because I'll catch myself like talking like a YouTuber that I watch. Yeah. And it it's can always, happen. Yeah. Very easily. Yeah. So yeah, some obviously we all pull from everyone. Like that's what life is. It's a network of like everyone's information kind of yeah. being shared. The social like connection. You know? But yeah, I definitely try to like I don't know. I feel like it I have I feel like each person has something so unique to offer and it's almost like I hate it being wasted. Like I talked on another episode I think about cover songs. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And it's like, if you cover someone's song, I feel like you're taking away from your, what you have to offer in your story. Mm. It's easier to play and it's nice and it's cool to share that person's great song. But like, if you push through, you know, you kind of dig into yourself and then have something to share that never existed. Mm. What do you think about that? I think that's interesting. I think I, I was caught up on the cover song thing because I feel like the way you sing it, is your own it's it's like that's almost like your own interpretation of the song coming out so i do see the value and i see the value in both yeah obviously complete originality that's yourself but i also see having your originality in discussion with somebody else's ideas can be cool too. create something new out of that yeah no, yeah, I'm definitely not knocking covers. Right, no, I definitely, I know. yeah. It's just like, <laughs> no, I love covers for sure, and that's a great point. I feel like they, it's just kind of balance, yeah. you know? It's yeah. trying to pull from both. Yeah. And, yeah, man, that's, sometimes I can lean more towards one side. Like, I, I get almost tunnel vision on things and mm-hmm. focus. Mm-hmm. So, I'll just, like, completely box something out, but... How about you? Do you ever feel like you go over the top with like being all in on something and kind of like tunnel vision? I think that kind of doesn't happen to me naturally. I think I'm more inclined to bounce back and forth between different things. You seem very balanced, you know, even just in your personality, it's but fascinating. like even yeah, even in the yeah, in, in your videos and the things you choose to do and stuff like that it seems you know, spread out, not just like, I'm only doing this and this is how it has to be or something, you right. know? It's... Yeah, I mean, so I don't know how directly this answers the question, but when I'm going throughout my day, things pop into my head constantly and I always switch what I'm doing, which actually gives me like just start feeling anxious about it because I'm like, oh, I'm doing, I'm editing this video, but this popped into my head. So now I'm doing this, but then I remember <laughs> that I got to finish the video. Mm. so it's like a big chaotic uh my brain's a little bit of chaos and i'm trying to actually fix that really be able to focus on things more how so um mostly writing things down like every time anything pops in my head i put it down on the same app on my phone nice so i can go back and look at it um so now if i'm if i'm working on a video and something pops in my head instead of 
shifting projects, just write the other thing down. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That writing things down, I think was a huge part of like my life changing. Yeah. Like just starting, I have a notebook. I have like a couple of notebooks that I've went through and I went back and looked at them the other day and I met like all of those things happened every single one. Like I just wrote all these ideas and what I wanted to do. It's even before YouTube. And like, I was like, Oh, I did all of them. It's weird. And it's, it's weird. And then I started doing it more and more. And now it's like a ritual. Like every day I'm like writing things down and it, I think it does something that like concretes the idea in your head and also writing it out makes it like clear that you're you're like not doing that thing once it's concreted you're like oh i'm avoiding that yeah or something like that you know i feel that um i think part of it for me is you need to get the thought out of your head or else you're worrying about maybe you'll forget it or that's something that i stress about yeah it's like have an idea really don't want to forget it so got to put it down yeah and that's useful um what's that I forgot the word space, you know what I mean? And if you hold on to an idea, it's taking up energy right, and exactly. time and focus. And yeah. Once you get it out, it's like, ah, oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's it. You know? That's it. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. Do you, <laughs> do you ever meditate at all? Um, no, but I might like to. Yeah. Cause that's another huge thing for me. Like I'll do that 15 minutes in the morning, 15 at night. And that's really learning. Like you were saying in the middle of the day, you'll um, have thoughts will come in your head. And that's like you're training that muscle to go, oh, there's a thought. There's a thought. And you kind of while you're meditating, you're letting the thoughts arise. You're like acknowledging them and letting them go. And that's, I guess, sharpening that muscle. Yeah. So that sounds like something I would like for sure. Yeah. It's. Yeah, definitely. I think it helps with productivity too. It just kind of makes more of a clarity. Yeah. When you're like observing yourself, kind of. Well, every morning at Woodward, um, we do stretches before anyone can skate, and I feel like almost as the as a joke, the director, the skate directors, like put on really, like yoga music, like super chill, and they're like, "All right, everybody, just breathe," like. Take a moment for your thoughts. And I, I feel like they're joking, but it really helps me. <laughs> like, it feels so good. Yeah. Like, everyone gets quiet, just kind of chill Get out. Get centered. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have a couple more questions about YouTube. Cool. Um, have you done, like, a bunch of collabs with people? Or a few people? or? I guess technically, yeah. I mean, there's been plenty of other YouTubers in my videos. Yeah? Like you. Yeah. I bet well, that's true, yeah. I think. Yeah, I almost don't see it as collabs, though. Just kind of ended up in the same place and, and filmed a video. Do you feel like you learn a lot from those kind of experiences with, with the other YouTubers? Well, yeah. I mean, I feel like we touched about how our conversation made me think about all those things, like doing algorithm videos for the algorithm versus uh, what you want to do. So that made me think about that. Um, everybody does their thing differently. So it, it is always interesting to see. It's fascinating. You actually said something that well, you were talking about how everyone has a different perspective. And it's funny how to watch someone's YouTube video because it's just a projection of their was it own ideas or the, how they see the world? Yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Like, right. I, I kind of remember saying this now. Like, even the things you choose to film, like, even if even if for you it's just automatic, but what you choose to film, it says something about the way you are, what's important to you, what's yes. worth looking at. 100%. Right. Like, what you choose to talk about, everything it shows you the personality of somebody. Right. I agree completely. And yeah. it's all there. Like sometimes it's hard to see behind the video, but like the, yeah. the interest points and like the topics and thing, all those things show that person's character. Yes. You know? So it's, yeah, that's something I think about too. If I'm like, 
if I'm posting about a topic or thinking about doing a topic, I'm like, wait, that's kind of negative. Like, why am I thinking that way or something like that? You <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? Sure. So it's, yeah, those introspective moments definitely yeah. have helped. Well, I think that I'm often worried like this video is bad or something, but that idea actually reassures me because like, I think everyone can have a YouTube channel and it would be awesome because of that reason that you can see how they see the world different from you. So even if I'm thinking this video is bad, every decision I'm making um, is potentially like showing just a different perspective that might be completely new to somebody else. Right. And yeah. you've seen it so many times and you live it. Yeah. It seems bad and boring. Right. I think that's something like a lot of YouTubers face like yeah. every day. It's just like, you see that it's not exciting to you. Just like, all right. Yeah. Kind of, you know, and then someone else gets to see it and like packaged well and stuff. And then, right. and then afterwards you're like, oh, wasn't that bad? Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Well, so with ideas like that or like, like something that has helped me back was the fear of what people would think and skateboarding. And it's kind of like a blur, you know, like I never really thought of myself as someone that cared what people thought. But then when you do YouTube or something, you kind of realize like, oh, I cared more than Absolutely. I thought I did. And, um, and skaters tend to have like a very narrow rule book of like things you're allowed to do in the skate community. Yeah. And I have any thoughts on that. Cause that's something I've definitely battled. It took me a long time. I feel like I've reached a, a great place of not caring anymore. But at the beginning I was like, so self con like nobody wants to be the YouTuber, you know, in yeah. skateboarding. It's like, I think nowadays maybe it's it's better. It's getting there, but skateboarders yeah. were like and still are like the last to adopt to YouTube. I they feel they are. We're so old fashioned, like in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, I think it's because we love that we were anti-establishment right. at the start, and they don't want to let that go, and they're just like we're all just kind of holding on yeah. as tightly because we feel like it won't have that same magic if we're normal. Right. You know that makes sense and. If you think about it, there's no reason for it. Like Thrasher's got a YouTube channel. They're, yeah, they're using YouTube. Yeah, to, like it, not in the same way as a vlogger, but they're still using the tool. Hundred percent. No reason somebody else shouldn't. If you do like even a slight bit of research into any of this, you quickly go, "Wait, none of this makes sense." Like none of these rules that people care about. Like right, everyone's kind of a, you know, hypocrite in that sense. You're just like, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's like the the topic of of thinking about others seeing you in a bad way or just judging you in general. It's like it can be so powerful, like it can really influence the way you act. And I think that's so stupid. Like, I've always thought it was stupid, but I, I used to let it affect me way more. Yeah. Um, oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah. When when I was younger, it, it like guided, I didn't realize it was guiding me. That's the right. thing. It's like a blur, you know, you don't really know. Yeah. But like, I just wouldn't do things or take opportunities because of that. And I didn't even realize right. that till later on. And I think real, if you realize that, like your, your life is, it's happening and you're letting other people essentially decide how you're going to live. I yeah. think if you realize that, that can really help you decide to start just being yourself. Yeah. Um, I feel yeah. like YouTube really helps with that too. It's almost like practicing not caring. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's cool. And then it also has done this thing with me where it kind of like, I don't know, you're posting every day and people are watching and you have to start like thinking about what you're saying and where you're going maybe. Yeah. You know, like more than you would normally. Right. So, but yeah, with, with selling out and skateboarding, like, do you ever get nervous or anything like posting on Instagram? Like, like I saw you did a Doritos post. Yeah. Like if I did that, I would be thrilled. Like, oh shit, I'm kind of making money off of like what I love to do. But then the old part of me growing up in the 2000s would be like all of the skate communities like, no, you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. That's, you know, we're going to rip you apart. I think that, <laughs> I know? think that my relationship with like, Posting a brand deal like that was timed well. 
because people are really starting to accept that that people are doing that to fund creative careers yeah so i actually think i never had to worry about that personally um it's true you're a little later of a like a generation yeah worried way more about just putting videos on youtube like Mm. i used to not tell anybody that i had a youtube channel really yeah like (laughs) for the first year in college like basically only told close friends that's actually that's one of the things i liked about youtube too is like you can just try this thing and no one knows about it and you could be putting your creativity out there not being judged by your immediate friends and you just kind of like let's see if people like this or like right. and you don't have to you know yeah publicly fail or anything like that you right know? yeah that's so funny <laughs> but so yeah you did that that ad and i looked through the comments and it was like everyone loved it yeah, they like, were... there's never any negative feedback, so it's like right. I just start to realize it's in my own head, and it's those old ideas from the skateboarding. Yeah, you made you a know? great video about um, was it like being intimidated at the park or something? Yeah, yeah. Like you said, I've like quoted this to people. You said like, if you think other people are judging you, that's you projecting your yeah, it's you projecting that out, right? Right. So yeah, it's a version of the same thing. It's for sure. But it's yeah, it's funny watching like I don't know, I just I'm thankful to YouTube cuz it's helping me get all these old useless kind of um what's it? idiosyncrasies of skateboarding out of me. Yeah. Like these old ideas that weren't serving me, you know. Right. But damn, man. Yeah, I mean, I like the helmet. It's like Oh yeah. I I That's never... actually yeah. Like, it's the same thing. I mean, scared. I I think I always wanted to wear one, but I didn't know that. I think I just, like, it was so easy to do what everyone else was doing. Yeah. It's like such a, no, at LES, nobody's wearing a helmet, you know? Yeah, you have to be the only one that is at LES, like, with a helmet on. Yeah, and it's, it's crazy how practicing not caring really helps you not care. Like, I felt insane wearing a helmet at LES for the first time. Like, thought everybody was looking at me. It's just like your video, but I I think that was all in my head. Yeah, right? You almost project it, like your own fear, out. Because now when I go, I'm I'm 100% sure that nobody cares. Yeah. It's so funny. (laughs) (laughs) It's funny, yeah. It's like, it's a muscle. Right. It's like, and then you get used to breaking in that that muscle. Like, oh, I'm scared? Oh, I've done this before. I'm making this up. Um, three times, five times later, I'm going to forget about it. And then it doesn't exist anymore. No, it's, it's crazy. But in the beginning, was that like a huge thing for you? Like even posting about it on YouTube that you wear a helmet and stuff? Yeah. You know, I mean, so tell you the, the story about how it started. Right. So I always, I think I always felt inside that I would rather wear a helmet, just felt better wearing one. And there was a video that Josh Katz posted where he like, he always wore a helmet, right? He like tried, maybe it was a front tail or something at this ledge in Harlem, I think. And like overshot the ledge, wheels slipped out and he like slammed his helmet on the street. Um, I was like, oh, that's crazy. Like, let me show Nora. <laughs> and then she watched it and like started freaking out. She was like, like, you're like, that's going to happen to you, you know? Like, um, and for some reason that, that clicked in in my head i was like why am i not wearing a helmet like i kind of want to like that would feel good so i started wearing one immediately made a video about it about why i'm going to start wearing them that was almost to keep me accountable because i was like i had experienced wearing one and then stopping again so i was like if i make this video i'm gonna wear it for the rest of time (laughs) yeah that's one of the great things also with YouTube is like when you make that and put it out there or even in life, it doesn't have to be YouTube. If you say it to people and like announce it, then you're accountable and it it helps you keep that word. Right. So, all right. So you posted and then did anyone like respond on the YouTube channel? Like when you posted that video? I think, um, I can't remember like what the response was to that video. Mm -hmm. I feel like honestly, people didn't care. Yeah. Like it was, it was always, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's always in your own head. Yeah. Um, That's really funny. 
Yeah. And now it's like this huge thing and like people love it. And I love that you are pushing that and like helping people that it's pretty practical to wear a helmet. Yeah. It's you know, <laughs> and it's just funny that. I don't know. It's like a thing to be scared to wear a helmet right. or that, something. And then you're breaking that down. I love yeah, that. And that's all I care about. Like if, if you make your own decision not to wear a helmet, I think that's fine. But I think it's what I'm trying to help kids do is realize if they were in my situation, like wanting to wear one, but just, just like so easily did what their friends did. Yeah. That they didn't even think about it. Yeah, man. It's, it's huge. Like, it helps to be able to look up at someone that has done it. Yeah. You know, otherwise it doesn't exist and you don't know like, oh, it's yeah. Like it's, I'm not allowed to wear a helmet. So you're being that person in the community and that's, yeah, that's huge. Yeah. I think just like slowly spread that word, normalize it. Um, One of the coolest things about it is like when parents like thank me for, getting their kid to wear a helmet it's like happened that it happened at woodward in person which was really cool and sometimes i'll get emails and that always makes me feel good that's so awesome yeah like it's working in some way that was probably such a rich experience for you being at woodward just like between things like that and the joy of teaching for me is like just one of the best things in the world yeah how was your uh, woodward experience well it's a magical place i mean it's in the middle of pennsylvania and They've just built this facility that brings skaters from all over the East Coast and other places. And just like everyone there just loves skating so much. So it's like really like nothing else. It's like a little mini society where everyone skates. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And so let's see. How was, so you were there for a week? Three weeks. Three weeks? Yeah. Damn. I feel like you learn a lot at Woodward. Like you learn at a rate that's like nowhere else. Yes. You know? <laughs> yes. I think I think for me my philosophy is that since you wake up, there's literally nothing to do but skate. So you're skating 9 a.m. because there's nothing else to do. And then you skate till lunch and you eat lunch and then it's nothing to do. So you go skate. So like it's it's super fun and even if you don't feel like skating, you're still gonna mess around on your board. So just oh you're always skating. And I think that's what makes you get just, good. The fast. sheer amount of just time that you're on the board and yeah. you're just in one place. Yes. Also, I mean, I saw you trying uh like a back lip a handrail. I mean, so you got like a huge handrail you can attempt and have a foam pit at yeah. the bottom and stuff. Like that's escalates your learning curve like so much i feel definitely you know because when would you try that on the street yeah i'm not ready for it (laughs) yeah if you watch the clip i would have died yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's awesome but yeah that we gotta get into skate and vert man we gotta do a woodward trip yeah because that's something i've always wanted to do and long island has one vert ramp and you know it's pretty gnarly so yeah, Chad and I were outside with his dog before this, <laughs> and we decided that we're gonna learn to skate vert together. <laughs> I we have to learn backside airs. That's that's, that's also, the goal. That's the same <laughs> for me. It's like just imagine. Yeah, just, just back and out. forth backside airs. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, all right, I got another question for you. It's skateboarding related. Where do you think the future of skateboarding is going with the Olympics in 2020? I think it. I'm I'm kind of I don't know. It's I think it's becoming more the obvious answer more mainstream. Um so at Woodward I could I feel like I could see these changes happening. Really? Because there's a lot a lot more parents are going to Woodward with their kids and they're like coach parents, which makes me okay. uncomfortable. <laughs> Cuz like skateboarding is always the thing where you can not have a coach. Yeah. Um, That's one of the hugest parts of it for yeah. me. It was just, yeah, it's self-discovery. It's like learning on your own. Yes. No rules. And I think what I witnessed at Woodward is that there's a new skateboarding. And it's this contest-bred skater. And I think that's going to get bigger. Um, and it's almost going to feel like a different sport. Mm. Yeah, I guess, right? Because 
if it goes like geared towards big contests like that, you're just going to start like being trained to <laughs> fly over big ramps and yeah. not be in the streets where you get kicked out, where right. it's like you get tickets. That's that is pretty interesting, man. Yeah. And it's like you'd be if you're a, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be skaters that choose to be a contest skater on their own in addition to just parents like raising their kids that way. But then it's like you train for a specific type of skateboarding, which is that's like almost fine because we all get to pick how we want to skate. Um, I don't know. Should yeah. Be. Yeah, it's definitely I mean, there's going to be like, yeah, when it's on TV and stuff like that and all these huge sponsors, that's I don't know. I could see the core community kind of gritting their teeth at it. Definitely. But I think it's cool. I think it, they could both exist fine. And I think it's necessary. I feel like a lot of people wouldn't be making a living off of skateboarding if it weren't for these big brands. And a lot of, you know, that's really, yeah. Yeah. No, and, I'm, yeah. I'm not one of those guys who's like, yeah. Fuck the Olympics. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. That's. It's funny too when you break it down because the the other brands like say you're getting paid by a skate brand it's the same thing as getting paid by like Walmart right what's the difference really I don't know yeah I guess you know I found out an interesting skate industry secret I'm not gonna name names but okay it's like a thing where the skate brand has like a low key side brand that they sell to Walmart to keep their name out of Walmart. Oh, sh- Really? But still make the money from Walmart. Interesting. Yeah. It's not a bad idea. It's kind of, I mean, it's smart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, man. Shit. All right. Well, I think we can wrap it up now, right? I think That's so. Great, yeah, yeah. It was a great conversation, that man. That was awesome. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks for coming out. And that's it. Yeah, next uh, next time you see us, we'll be learning backside airs. Yo, I, I freaking <laughs> hope so. I think we could do it. All right, man. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, absolutely. Oh,